we wanted to show you today about how to compute and generate new data. And this use case is uh, mostly around implementing some logic on the raw data so that it's more straightforward and convenient to use it in destination tools. A primary example from our own usage will be to compare a uh, user's uh, technographics information about the tools that he may be using with what we support so that we can use it for lead scoring, for instance, and we can run a certain marketing campaigns just for users that have at least um, X a number of matching technologies that we can support. So those people who are having a lot of tools that we don't have, we want uh, be uh, our focus. Uh, so that could be also a processor logic, pretty similar as the first one. Uh, it will be an array where I will define um, those values. Maybe I'll show you that really quick because that will be pretty straightforward code. I'll again go to a processor code. And I will start by defining the list of technologies that we support, which will be here. These are this is not the full list of our connectors. This is just an example. And since this is a slightly different uh, computation, uh, I will just start it back on the user profile. Yeah, I had an error here, but I think it should be fixed now. And this user. should have clear bit tech data coming in really quick. Yeah, actually, let me just quickly check what we have here. Yep, so let me just get back to the code to make it run really quick. Okay, so the end result here is four. I had a small bug in my code. I was just changing it last minute before the webinar. Uh, so it can be a count, but let's say I would like to actually know the actual. So let's say this attribute will be ca called um, matching tech count, and I will create a new one just below, which will be very similar unified matching tech, and I will just like to see the values of those um, uh, tools and I will paste it here so you can see we are computed the count which may be very convenient for your segmentation and just trigger the campaign for people who have passed the threshold but you can have um, the actual values here in a separate attribute and then you can use it maybe in your personalized personalized messaging uh, asking the you know a person if he's maybe using one of those and you have probably have high chances of um, telling something that resonates with the with your uh, user so that was one way of generating new data points uh, based on the existing data points. And let's go one step further. So now we'll look into the events data. So as I said, events are a stream of activities related to the user or performed by the user. And attributes are something that are stored. And the thing is that not all destination tool may be supporting events or maybe using them are, is not as convenient. And also not tools can store events indefinitely. That includes how we will store your events um, in most cases for 90 days, except some crucial uh, life cycle events. Uh, so you may want to bubble up certain um, events data to an attribute, but it can be also because of it's much uh, more convenient. So let me go back to the HAL dashboard to show you how you can do that. I will start by opening up, which an interesting, uh, which has an interesting um, event that booked made on a certain page. So you can see we have a couple of properties here that may tell us more about that event, when it happened, or how it happened, and, and what are the additional metadata provided. So let's say the user um, type in that text, he would like to learn more about segmentation when he was booking that demo. Um, so I'll go back to a processor code and show you um, how easy it is to 
bubble up that event information to an attribute. Going to the code editor again, I hope by now you're like feeling very comfortable about that. So I'll I will start by going to events here. On the left side, we can obviously um, preview that. The events is an array, so a table or a list of events that won't uh, include all the events that ever happened on that user. This will be only the most recent events that actually made that user being updated and then it hits the processor. So uh, it will be, um, it will be a list of events. So I'll need to do a small loop where I iterate over the events and I will search for a particular event. So I need to check if the event I'm you know, just encountering here is demo booked. If it's the case, now I can write my attribute. And again, I will stick to the convention unified slash, which is a, a character to use for uh, grouping attributes together. And I will call that last demo booked at, and I will pick uh, the date from the actual event. So here on the right side, hopefully I yeah, will see that uh, previewed value of an attribute. So the last demo booked is uh, happened at this time. And it's very uh, convenient to have that last um, event information being updated every time it happened. Because if you imagine this triggers um, either a notification to the salesperson, you probably want to uh, make it happen again, even if the user makes makes that activity again after a long period of time, because it, it maybe means he's again, interested in testing out the product. But let's say you also would like to know when the first event happened. There is also a way to achieve that. Let's say we'd like to write a first, first demo booked at property. And here I would need to use a slightly advanced operation, which we call set if null. That will tell our platform that this value can be updated only once. So it will contain the first occurrence of the event. So the end, the value is the same as the, in the previous example. So it will be create when the event was created. So here the values will be the same, but next time the user performs the event, last demo book at will be updated. First demo book at will stay the same. But what if I want to bubble up some of the properties from the event? It's also very easy. I can just, you know, add more attributes here and look into the properties object. So here on the right side, we'll see that this uh, note from a customer or from the lead is being bubbled up on the attribute. So it can go to a CRM system now and salesperson can understand where, um, what are the additional details the user provided or I can pull up the page. So maybe I can use it for some kind of um, um, analytics and I can push that to an analytical tool or a data warehouse so it can learn more about where uh, the most them are heading. So that will be uh, taking a couple of properties and information from the event data and store it on the um, user profile. 